Welcome to another tutorial from Ada LLC, Advanced Engineering Design Apps. In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through the new software FRP Column Confinement Analysis that was recently released by Ada LLC. Using this software, you can design and analyze reinforced concrete columns and also design and analyze reinforced concrete columns strengthened with FRP plies or sheets. This software was tested and generated in accordance with ACI 440.2 and ACI 318. The main interface is divided into four main sections, the geometry of the section, the material used, and we have also the results and the controller for this software. This software operates under US units and SI units with the ability to move between these two systems freely. Also, this software can design rectangle and circular sections. For the geometry part, we have the cross-section geometry, the steel geometry, and the FRP geometry. For the cross-section, for the rectangle in the rectangular case, you'll need to insert or define the width and the height, and in case of circular, you need to define the diameter of the section. In both cases, you will need the clear cover for uh, for the section. For the longitudinal steel, you need to define the distribution of the steel. In this case, we have three layers in X and three layers in Y. Defining the bar diameter or bar number is necessary to know what kind of steel do we have. For the transverse steel, we also have the option for bar diameter or bar number and also the spacing. For the FRP geometry, we need to define the number of layers and the layer thickness and the corner radius in case of rectangle cross sections. For the material section, we have the, the material properties for the concrete, the material properties for the longitudinal steel and transverse steel, as well as the FRP. For the concrete, we need to define the compressive strength of the concrete as well as the modulus of elasticity and epsilon prime C, which is the strain at maximum compressive stress as, as well as the maximum unconfined strain. For the longitudinal steel, we have the yield strength known as Fy and the modulus of elasticity. Also, the same properties applies for the transverse steel. For the FRP material properties, we need to know the modulus of elasticity and the ultimate rupture strain epsilon Fu star, as well as the type of the ply. In this case, we have the carbon type, glass type, and armor type, as well as the exposure condition. The ACI defined three cases for the exposure condition, the interior exposure, the exterior exposure, and the aggressive environment. In this tutorial, we will be solving ACI 440.2 example. We have a rectangular column of 24 by 24, which is a square column, and a clear cover of 1 inch, and 4 layers of steel in X, and 4 layers of steel in Y, with a bar number of 10. And they don't have stirrups. In this case, we can choose zero diameters and zero spacing. With the number of layers, they have six layers with a thickness of 0.013 inches and the corner radius of one inch. For the compressive strength of the concrete, they have 6.5. And we can choose the ACI default. And in this case, the software will calculate the modulus for you based on the ACI equation and the 1.71 F prime C divided by E concrete for the epsilon prime C. We will keep the maximum unconfined strain as 0.003. The link to the steel is 60 KSI and 29,000. For the FRP, we have the modulus of 33,000 KSI and for the ultimate rupture strain, we have 0.0167. We have a glass type and we have interior exposure. Through our controllers, we can design the interaction diagram for this case 
and the first controller will give you the confined versus the unconfined. The confined basically is taking into account the FRP confinement effect. For the unconfined, the effect of FRP is neglected. By clicking this, we can see we, ha we need to insert the resultant moment angle. This is important for the biaxial effect and you can see that alpha in this case is, divide, is, is defined as the, tan, the, inverse, the tangent inverse of my divided by mx, choosing it as zero for uniaxial as the ACI example. We can see that we developed the interaction diagrams for the confined and unconfined effect. On the y, we can see the axial forces, and in the x, we can see the resultant moment. The second controller will give you the confined versus confined design. Basically the confined design is taking into account all reduction factor or all safety factors used in ACI. For the same uniaxial we can see the two interaction diagrams. The third controller will give you the unconfined versus the unconfined design. And in each case, you always need to insert the resultant moment angle. This is the interaction diagram between the unconfined and the unconfined design. If you're only interested in the design curves without the full confined or the full unconfined, you can use the fourth controller to get the design curves for the confined and unconfined cases. In case you want to see a different uh, effect of steel ratios or FRP ratios for confined or, a, or a steel ratios for the unconfined, you can use these three controllers which are only in the pro and the premium version. The design for steel ratios confined will give you a different series of ratios to show you a different effect of different steel ratios on this section for the same FRP ratio that we have. The design for FRP ratios will make the steel ratio constant and variate the FRP ratios for the confined effect. This message showing that one of the ratios that we are, test are, uh, that we are testing does not meet the ACI requirement for confined. You will see this message showing that the ratio between the maximum confining pressure and the unconfined concrete strength is less than 0.08 and in this case the FRP jacket will not provide any confinement. And you can see the rest of the ratios plotted here for different FRP ratios. If you need to design for steel ratios for unconfined and there is no FRP, you can use the last controller before the report. The last controller is the report. And using it, you can save all your inputs and results in a well-organized document in a PDF format. The next feature I want to talk about is the tabulated data button over here. Using this button, you can see the interaction diagram in numbers, which allows you to take these numbers to an Excel, for example, for further investigation. Also, the software plots the cross section for you so you can see the concrete, the steel, the FRP drawn to scale. So if there is any obvious or clear mistake, you can easily notice it. The next feature I want to talk about is the manufacturer FRP. What we did is we chose a user specified and we insert the model of elasticity and ultimate rupture strain for this sheet. However, you can also choose from our library for, from Structure Technologies Company and Geotree Solutions. So we have all their products embedded and listed here in, in the software. So choosing one you can see all its property and its description and you can choose it to use it in strengthening your column. The next big thing I want to talk about is how to account for the slenderness 
effect of the column. Till now, we only inserted the cross-section property, which allow us to draw or plot the interaction diagram for a short column without taking into account the slenderness effect. Using the loads tab over here, you can account for the slenderness effect. This feature is only available in the premium version of this software. In the loads tab, you can choose a load combination to apply on your load. For example, we choose the first combination from ACI 318.19, which is the dead load 1.4 dead load. You will insert the axial load, the compressive axial load on the column, MX, the moment applied on the top of the column in the X direction, and the MX in the bottom in the bottom of the column. MY, the moment applied in Y direction on the top of the column to allow for biaxial loading, and MY applied at the bottom of the section. This software used the magnification factor procedure to calculate the slenderness effect. In the lower section over here, we have the option for non-sway and sway for X and Y direction. For example, you can have X as a non-sway and Y as a sway. Choosing non-sway, you will need to insert the effective length factor known as K for X and Y and the length, the unsupported length in X and Y. And you can see that the, the definition for LU on over here. Choosing the sway option will require two more inputs. The first input is the lateral deflection. How much deflection do we have in the sway direction when we apply a lateral shear, a lateral shear load known as the lateral deflection to the total applied lateral shear ratio. This step might require an external structural analysis software to, to, to do it for you. The second input is the sum of all axial forces in the whole story. You can do this for X and for Y direction. On the right hand side, you can see first the sign convention that we are using for counterclockwise is a positive moment, which you need to account for. You can always insert a positive moment or a negative moment. On the lower part, you can see a guideline how to use this form. We can start by the first thing to do is to, to choose the load combination you want to apply on the column. In this case, we chose 1.4 dead load. The second step to insert the compressive axial load and moments in X and Y on the top and the bottom of the section by the sign convention. So if we choose a 500 kips for our column, uh, minus 200 for MX on the top, minus 200 for MX on the bottom, 200 on the top for Y, and 200 on the bottom uh, for Y. We will choose a non-sway condition where K is 1 in both cases for simplicity, and LU is 12 feet. And then we have to submit our form. This form will be reflected as a load point in their interaction diagram. So now if we click a confined versus unconfined, for example, we can see our load point over here. A load point inside the interaction diagram means this load is safe to be applied on that column. If the point is outside, means it's not safe to apply that amount of load on this column. Now you may notice that we, when we click the confined versus unconfined, it didn't ask us about the alpha, the angle of uh, my over mx, the inverse tan of my over mx. This is because when we apply the load, we applied mx and my, so the alpha is calculated internally in the software, and since we have 200, and 200, the alpha was 45 degrees, and it's directly reflected for us. 
This is the end of our tutorial. You can always go to www.ada.app to download a demo version and test this software, either the pro, the premium or the basic versions and test all the features. And if you have any questions, please contact us on the email and the phone number listed on the website. Thank you for listening and have a good day.